Hey guys and welcome to my channel. I was thinking to share with you in this video 5 tips for watercolors that definitely made my life easier. So why not share it and maybe help you too. That might also improve your watercolor skills and final paintings, so make sure you stick around and watch them all. Before starting, I wanted to mention that if you are learning watercolors or want to advance in your art, make sure you check out my channel as you can find here over 100 watercolor tutorials and also links for some free sketches I shared to help you get started and stay inspired. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel for I upload new tutorials at least twice a week and hit the notification bell so you don't miss them. And now, without further ado, let's get to those tips. First tip, reuse your washi tape. You probably already know that you can achieve nice borders that give your paintings an elegant look by sticking washi tape to the edges and after finishing your masterpiece, peeling them off. But as I used to do, maybe you do it also, throw those washes right away. But washi tape can absolutely be reused a couple of times before it has to go to trash. So after use, just stick them to a smooth surface, I'm using a plastic mat, and clean them simply with water and paper or cotton towel until there is no paint lifting up from them. After they dry, just stick them again to your new and blank watercolor paper, making it ready to paint. And there you go, you are cycling and being eco-friendly. For the excess tape, you do not need right away, stick it to a plastic box lid, tray, mat or any other smooth plastic or glass surface and store it until you need it again. Saves you money and reduces waste. Second tip, straighten your paintings. For this one, you will need a hard surface, desk or floor, white sheet or any cloth, iron, some hard straight board, I'm using MDF hardboard or tray, and books, lots of them. Plug your iron into socket on highest temperature. Prepare everything else while it warms up. On that hard surface, place your cloth and straighten it, use it doubled up. I will iron both paper made of cellulose and also of cotton, so you can see both results. First one is cellulose and second one is cotton. You can now also see how warped they are. Put your paintings on the cloth clear side up and cover it again with doubled cloth. Iron it until you notice they're not so wavy anymore. You can also use a bit of water and sprinkle it on cloth, especially if you do not have steam iron. But don't pour the water or damp the cloth, as that will definitely ruin your watercolor. After finished and while the cloth is still very warm, place the board on it and then sort your books over them. I'm using hardboard as my books are smaller than paintings and they must be covered all the way, otherwise they will bend. If you do not have board or any piece of smooth wood, plastic and your paintings are smaller, just place the books so they cover them entirely. Leave it to cool off. I usually leave it for a couple of hours and then move your books from your paintings. And there you go, this is the result. And you can see that both are pretty straightened and paintings are intact. Now your art is ready to be framed and enjoyed. Third tip, sketching on regular paper. I do not know how many times it happened to me to tear my good watercolor paper when sketching directly on it. I draw, erase, draw, erase and after it I'm left with stains, dents and rips on my paper. The lighter the pencil is, it is harder and can easily make dents on sensitive watercolor paper. When finished with painting, that all shows through and make my art unusable, not for framing, selling or giving away. So I decided to leave more demanding sketching 
directly on watercolor paper to those skilled and sketch just on a regular printing paper. That is a worry-free sketching and I can make as much corrections as I need. After finishing the sketch, I trace it on watercolor paper using a graphite paper, but instead you can of course place it on your window and trace it. Afterwards, I lighten it with kneaded eraser, which is perfect as it cleans itself and doesn't leave any stains on paper. Just tap it in and make your sketch as light as you want and prepared for most fun part, painting it. Fourth tip. Stretch your watercolor paper. I wanted to demonstrate difference in paper warping and in quality of your wash when you stretch and don't stretch your paper. I'm using paper that is 200 gsm or 94 pounds and made of cellulose. I will stretch my paper using MDF board, but you can also attach it to your desk or any other hard surface. I sprayed some water to my board, spread it with brush to make it slightly wet and then attached my paper to it. I also pressed it on a board by going over it with wet brush. Right away, and while it is still wet, I glued washi tape on edges to make a nice border. On washi tape, I also added some stronger tape, which is actually the one holding my paper to a board. Washi tape would detach from paper and it would warp. I did not stick stronger tape directly to watercolor paper, as it would tear it when removing. On the other paper, I just added washi tape to the edges. Now we will test them and see the difference. First one is not stretched paper and on both of them I will use a quite amount of water and you can already see that this paper is quite a lot warping and I'm trying to press it down but it just goes up again and it is also much harder to work on that sort of paper because it is moving under your brush and just makes painting washes pretty hard. I will now dry it completely and then paint another layer. As you can see straight away that the paper is pretty much warped after only one layer and it doesn't look nice. You can also notice that there are some puddles formed on the paper because of its warping and when the paper is dried the wash we were making is not really beautiful, it has some, well, to me, ugly markings and unwanted textures and effects. If that is the look you're going for, then that is fine, but if not, you can end up with some result you did not want. I will also repeat the same steps that I did before on the other painting that I stretched. And right away you can see after the first layer that this paper is warping a lot less, that there are no problems with it, that it's quite easier to paint like that because it is attached to a board and it doesn't run, it doesn't move under your brush and there are also no puddles formed on it. And also after the second layer and treatment with quite amount of water it still doesn't warp and it actually behaves pretty well and looks very nice. After you finish with your painting just leave it to dry completely and if you use the hair dryer leave it to cool off completely and only after that take off your washi tape. As you could have seen, I wasn't really gentle with taking off my washi tape and tape and the paper is still pretty straight and not warped and if you compare those two papers, you can very much see the difference. Tip number 5. A palette for mixing our paint. For the last tip in this video, I wanted to address the palette which we use for mixing and preparing our paint for applying it on paper. 
Most of us, including me, are using or did use a palette made from plastic. It's not only that it's hard to clean and staining, but also a lot of times there are leftover paint in corners and edges that mixes with our fresh paint, sometimes producing muddy results. I myself am using, I think that's a candle holder from IKEA, and also I do use a ceramics palette that is just really intended to be a mixing palette. And I must admit, the time that I spent cleaning it is just unbelievable. It's just clean in a couple of seconds and all you, all you need is a little bit of water and some paper towel. Unlike plastic palettes, you have to rinse on the water, use scraping sponges and even then you cannot clean it entirely. I always thought my paint would drip one into other and mix even if I do not want that in a flat surface, but it is not so at all. Not if you are not using a pool of water to dilute your paint, in which case you can use just a little bit less paint and you'll need also less water to dilute it. Instead of plastic palettes, my advice is to use ceramics, porcelain or glass tray, container, plate, dish and so on. There are so many variety and it does not have to be intended to be a palette. It will shorten your cleaning time drastically and help avoiding messy palettes and muddy paint as a result. These are my 5 tips for this video. I hope you find them helpful and if you do, please give this video a thumbs up. You know the rest. Comment, share, subscribe. And I hope I'll see you next time. Bye!